Greetings and salutations, people of the internet. Austin here, and it's been a while, so apologies about that if you've missed hearing the sound of my god-awful voice and my even worse audio quality and recording equipment. Woo! Jokes aside, if you saw the title of today's video, you'll know that I'm here to talk about Gotham Knights and my speculation for the characters, or more specifically the villains, I think we'll see in this game, or at least the ones I hope to see. I know, shocking, me doing a villain video. Crazy. Anywho, jokes aside, let's just go right in on it here. Now, I'm going to try to make this a little bit more structured for myself, so I'll hopefully have an easier time editing and you can skip around how you want. So, this is how we're going to do things. Well, I'm going to talk about the confirmed villains first. I'm going to talk about the teased villains next. I'm going to talk then about the ones I feel are locks for this game. Then I'm going to talk about the ones I think have a good shot. Then the ones that I think are long shots, but I would like to see show up regardless. So, this is probably going to be one of the longer ones, knowing how much I like to ramble with these. So, strap in people, this is probably going to be a nightmare for both of us. Anywho, let's get started. Okay, first up, as of the recording of this video, WB Montreal have only confirmed two villainous factions that we will be seeing in Gotham Knights thus far. The first being what I presume to be the main villains of the game, the Court of Owls, and their undead assassins, the Talons. And one of the many villain crimes littering the city is the, the staple of the Batman universe, Mr. Freeze. Who, and I'm just going to go into a quick bit of speculation here, I think his entire storyline is just him trying to flash freeze Gotham in order to prevent the Talons from being able to operate since their main weakness is uh, sub-zero temperatures, but I'm getting off track here. So yeah, that section's gonna be super quick. Um, I'm super excited for the Court of Owls. They're one of my favorite new additions to the Batman universe and Mr. Freeze is always a staple. So here's hoping they'll be able to do something interesting with him. Though since this is the uh, court storylines based in the New 52. I really hope they don't go with uh, the New 52 version of Nora Freeze and Victor's relationship. Because if you know how that story works, yeesh. But uh, yeah, that bits real quick. So let's move on to the villains I feel are a lock in for this. So in an interview, sorry, multiple interviews. The devs from WME Montreal have really focused in on Gotham's history as a big yeah, focus on their version of Gotham and the story, all 350 years of it. And like the five boroughs that and the families that helped shape Gotham. And so I think there are at least two characters I feel are locks for this game. Penguin, for his family's history with Gotham, since the Cobblepots have been around for a long time, and he's an easy character to bring in to be one of the major gang leaders in a particular borough. Let's be honest, he's, he's a staple of the Batman universe. Granted, I would like to see more obscure gang leaders pop up, but if they can do something interesting with Penguin, I'm not going to be too upset. And for the same reason that I'm talking about Penguin, I'm going to bring up the possibility of Dr. Thomas Elliot, aka Hush. Now, let's be real, Hush was wasted in the Arkham series. He was complete garbage, thanks to Arkham Knight's ending of his storyline. So, if he's going to show up in this game, I really 
Really hope they give him something to do that's worthy of the player's time and the character's legacy. Since Hush isn't my personal favorite, but he has a lot of potential to be an adversary for the Bat family, considering that Bruce is gone. So it'll be interesting to see how they're going to handle him. Now, there's one other character I feel is a lock for this game, no matter how much I don't want him to. So I'm hoping that they will minimize his role. If you figured it out, it's the Joker. Now, I don't want the Joker to take over the main story, again, like in the previous Arkham games. This is a new franchise, a new universe, and I don't want Joker to take center stage yet. I just want to see the world and how this is... Gotham's going to react to a world without Batman, even though he's totally still alive, let's be real here. That being said, if they can do something interesting with the Joker reacting to Batman's supposed death and not have him take center stage in the main story, I could stomach him being one of the villain crimes. Though I would prefer he just be a cameo and let other villains take the spotlight. Now... Since I've already gotten off track with my order, let's just move on to the villains who have been teased for this game. And there's not too many. Two, can I feel, are there. One, maybe. The first up are the core... Bah, sorry. The League of Assassins and Ra's al Ghul. If we go way back to the initial teasing cycle when we still had the hashtag capture the night banner for this game and all the uh, logos that WB Montreal teased, one of them was clearly the demon's head. So, that combined with Jason Todd's official bio on the Gotham Knights website detailing that he was brought back to life and he, he straight up died, and I feel that is easy money for the court. Blah, why do I keep saying the court? The League. The League of Assassins being involved in Jason Todd's resurrection. Now, their role in the story, I don't know. If Bruce is indeed dead, they could be a way to resurrect the character for future installments. If they have some knowledge on what's going on, or if they themselves are going to war with the court over control of Gotham, who's to say? But if they do bring in the League of Assassins, I hope they just have more than the Al Ghul family. There are a lot of notable members of the League who could be worthy adversaries for the Bat family in this game. And I hope they utilize them better. Now, this one's a bit of a stretch. I feel that Two-Face might be in this game based on the marketing material we had. And even then, it can be construed otherwise. If you go back to when they were doing the daily teases on the redacted website before Fandom, the second unlocked image we got was the one you'll see on screen here. Face to Face. Now, if you see the spelling, you obviously would see potentially Two-Face. Granted, that could just be their countdown methodology leading up to the unveiling at the DC Fandom. But, I think Two-Face has a strong possibility of being in this game. Especially if you consider that if you remember some of the leaks from WB Montreal's cancelled Damian Wayne game, they were going to have Two-Face in this game supposedly take on his moniker of the Judge as his third personality manifested. Now, depending on how far along WB Montreal was in with that project before it was canned, I could easily see them recycling some elements of that for Gotham Knights. Like, I would actually love to see the Judge be brought in, because that would be a new 
avenue for Two-Face that we haven't seen in video games yet, and frankly, it would be nice if Tarvi had something, just something interesting since the last few video games he's been in, he's done basically jack and shit. Now, the last villain who I think is maybe, maybe teased, and this is a Mr. Fantastic level stretch here, Black Mask. And I am basing this solely on one of the screenshots we had with um, Red Hood. And you know, I'll post it on screen here and try to focus. On one of the billboards and ads amongst Gotham, you see an ad for Janus Cosmetics. And if you know your Batman, that is one of the many companies that Roman Sionis operates with to help fund his operations and keep up his front. Granted, there I could just be full of shit and he doesn't appear in game or isn't even black mask yet in this universe i don't know but that's just what popped into my brain and i figure get it out here and if i'm wrong i will gladly take the l but um yeah those are the ones i feel have been teased so let's move on to the characters i think have a good shot of showing up and then we'll go on to the ones i think aren't gonna show up but i would like to Alright, the first character I think has a strong possibility to show up in Gotham Knights. And this is maybe just wishful thinking. I would actually like to see Azrael take center stage. Granted, he had a decent role in the Arkham series, but I want to see it expanded on to what I think it could be. Now, the devs have already said that with this game, they didn't want to do Battle for the Cowl, which is why none of the Gotham Knights are trying to take over for Batman's moniker. I think it would be interesting if we see Azrael actually attempt to do so, like full modified Nightfall get regalia, as he fights off against the Gotham Knights, trying to assert himself as the new Batman and true protector of Gotham. And I think that thematically it could be really interesting to see them take on someone trying to ruin Bruce's legacy through bloodlust and violence that he, he would obviously bring in his tenure as Batman. Plus, I just love the Nightfall design. It's so cool, and I could easily see WB Montreal improving on this design. Maybe mix and matching with other Azrael costumes from over the years to give us uh, something really cool. I um, wishful thinking perhaps, but yeah, I just feel like get that out of the way now. And on the topic of Batman wannabes and anti-Batmans, the next one I feel has a good shot if they don't want to use Azrael for that type of storyline. And I feel that that Prometheus would make a good contender for a villain crime and just overall psycho in this game. Now, Prometheus was a character heavily teased in the Arkhamverse for a long time, and he never showed up, like, to the disappointment of a lot of fans. So, even though this game is its own separate universe, which I'm glad for, by the by, I think it would be nice to see Prometheus finally show up in a video game after years of being hyped up in another franchise just to see what he can do and maybe become more widely known amongst the casual fan base. I'll be real, I don't like Prometheus as a character because of Cry of, for Justice. That storyline made the character dead for me. But as a villain and potential boss fight, especially if they introduce something like the Nemesis system into this game, he could be a monster of a gameplay encounter that is too good to ignore despite my personal misgrievings with the character. Now one that I probably should have added to the teased characters list, but even then it's not enough to do so, Anarchy. Now, Anarchy's an interesting character 
because with everything going on, he seems like he would fit in perfectly, and, and this is another Mr. Fantastic level stretch here, we potentially see his henchmen in the announcement trailer attacking what appears to be either a church, a mosque, or something along those lines before they're uh, taken down by one of the Gotham Knights of your choosing. I don't know if Anarchy would be brought back since WB Montreal granted a different team already used Anarchy and Arkham Origins, so they might not want to tap that well again, but if they can tell a different enough story with the character, I could see them maybe bringing him back. Who knows? Could be interesting. Okay, and last but not least, let's move on to the characters I don't think are going to show up, but I would be very, very happy if they did. Let's move on to the one I feel is probably the most unlikely, but I would squee the most if they did. Killer Moth. Now, he's been a running joke in the Batman rogues gallery for a while, as, but I think if they take him a bit seriously, not too much, mind you, but make him competent, give him the ability to fly, and with his cocoon gun could easily restrain the player if they're hit by him, I think he could make an honest-to-God good boss fight, depending on the storyline they choose to go with him over the course of the game. But yeah, not too much to say with him. I think he's the most unlikely, but he would be probably one of the more fun characters to explore and fight against. Next up is the Great White Shark. As I alluded to with the Penguin, he is one of the main gang leaders I want to see be implemented in his stead. Mainly because I feel like characters like the Great White Shark don't get enough public recognition and they're barely known to the comics community as a whole. I don't even think that Great White Shark has had his own real story outside of his introduction. But I digress. It would be interesting to see if WB Montreal could really give this guy a, a well-fleshed-out personality and maybe even help bring some popularity to the character that can springboard into making him more of a widespread name throughout DC Comics. Next up is maybe even more unlikely than Killer Moth, but I would be happy if he showed up. And I've mentioned him before when I did my uh, Arkham 2019 villain wish list. Man, that was a long time ago. Anywho, and that would be uh, Cornelius Sturk. Now, if you're not familiar with this character, let me just give you the basic rundown. He is a serial killer with psychic abilities who can disguise himself to his victims in order to get close. And he likes to eat the hearts of his victims... I believe to stay alive is his psychosis or to increase his power. I forget which. It's one of those two, but yeah, he eats the hearts of his victims for one psychotic reason or another. I'm not sure how well you could do a boss fight encounter with him, but I feel like if they are embracing the detective elements, he could be a fun character to explore and try to track down before taking him down that and he is just so delightfully psychotic and fucked up that it would be nice to see brought to the forefront so with characters like pig and arkham knight they were the most interesting they were new they were psychotic they made your skin crawl and you just wanted to know more about them and this also applies to my final character I would like to see in Gotham Knights, even if it is highly, highly unlikely. And that is Barton Mathis, a.k.a. the Dollmaker. Now, this one's a l probably not going to happen since his story was connected to Jim Gordon. And since Jim is dead in this universe, I think that decreases his chances of showing up. But regardless, I would actually like to see Dollmaker show up and be a tangible threat to the Bat family, especially since he has his own twisted family to act as his bodyguards and enforcers. Like, this guy just oozes creepiness. 
Oh my god, this guy is just a, a nightmare. Like, I highly recommend you go look him up. Oh my god, this guy is a special blend of crazy. But, uh, yeah, I think I've rambled on long enough today, and if you've stuck with this all the way through, thank you very much for doing so. These are just my quick off-the-chuff thoughts and feelings on what I'd like to see from the rogues gallery of Gotham Knights. I'm super excited, and I really want to see more information about this game so I can have a better picture of what they're going to be doing with this universe and potentially all the new versions of characters that we will be getting. So that's super exciting for me. I always love seeing new interpretations of the characters if they're good. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed today's video, please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so. I'm going to try and do some more Gotham Knights videos in the future when we have more information. I'm tempted to do a Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League video, but since that is so far out right now, coming out in 2022, I'm going to hold off until we have more information like I'm doing with Gotham Knights currently. Here's hoping for a quarter one review, sorry, a release for Gotham Knights so we don't have to last too long. Thank God it, it is a cross-gen game. Anywho, thank you all for watching and have a nice day. Austin out.